Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to the bench. Hot off the China train, we have this lovely little amplifier board we're going to test out and review. It's a TDA7850 chip on the back there. And this is a four-channel amplifier. It has bridged outputs. Runs on 12 volts, probably up to 15 or 16 so here on the green screw connectors, you have your outputs, two channels on this side and the other channels on this side. And because it's four channels, you need two inputs here, two stereo inputs or uh, two left and right or front and back, however you want to configure it. So you can use these sockets here to get two channels in, this other socket for the other two, or you can use these stereo type mini jacks, three millimeter jacks. Uh, power connects here, has this choke to help remove noise and this very large capacitor. Uh, Chonks, I guess that's pronounced, Chonks brand capacitor. 10,000 microfarads. Looks impressive. Oh, we have the little LED here. What color do you think this is going to be? Hmm, I'm going to say that it's... I'll say it's red. I, I haven't hooked this thing up, but, you know, it's... Can either either be blue or red. Slight chance of it being green or yellow forgot to turn the air conditioner off that's what you heard turn on in the background so hang on a second okay let's see if I can get the old tablet going here TDA 7850 here we go in stock at Mauser ST microelectronics that's an ad. I want a data sheet. Here we go. Tardigrades grades are now on the moon thanks to a crashed Israeli spacecraft. Oh boy. They're going to mutate from the cosmic rays, build ships, and come back down and invade the human race. Okay, it's a 4x50 watt MOSFET quad bridged power amplifier. 4 by 50 watts at 4 ohms max. LOL. 30? 4 by 30 watts, 4 ohms? No. We'll check that out. MOSFET output stage. Power output stage. Excellent 2 ohm driving capability. Hi fi class distortion. Ooh. Meant for automotive use, so it has a bunch of protections. Should be a fairly durable IC as long as you've got a good sized heat sink on it. Here's the pinout. Very simple to use. Not a lot of components. Electrical characteristics. If you want to look at that, just pause. Or go find the data sheet on your own. Here's the hi fi like distortion. It dips down to 0 0.006, but it shoots up pretty high. Goes above 0.1, goes up like 0.2, but that's at high frequency 20 kilohertz. Yeah, you're not really going to notice that. And you can see this line's above 0.1. And eh, I wouldn't call it hi-fi, but it's certainly not a bad chip. A lot of the other ones I've seen have much higher distortion. Well, enough of that. I need to get that thing on a heat sink and hook it up and see what it sounds like. Okay, so you want to mount this to a pretty substantial heat sink. 
So I drilled and tapped holes and I'll find some screws and mount this chip right up to it. Put some heat sink compound on it. Get it powered up. Discover the color of that LED, which I've been waiting to find out most of all. Okay, I got the heat sink mounted and I have some speakers connected, power. Have the music player. I'll run through the little preamp here. I need to patch the signal through to the amplifier. To do this one-handed. There's the thing goes on the floor already. Try that again. There we go. And I guess this would be the left side. The two channels that are connected to the left side of the amplifier. I don't know. Turn the amp on. And the power supply. I have to uh, put this in parallel mode. Is that it there? Yeah. Uh, we'll set the thing for 12 volts. I can combine the two channels together so I can benefit from double the current. Each channel is 3.2 amps, so I get 6.4 amps. So, let's see what happens. I'm not going to current limit it, I'm just going to turn it on. That's not drawing a lot. And. There you have it, a red LED. So we have RGB, we have all the colors, RGB. I have the YouTube friendly music since YouTube has put a cap on playing any copyrighted music even a few seconds. And it works. Sounds pretty clean, and if I put the mics close to the tweeters here, very, very faint hiss. I would say that's not a problem at all. So what I'm going to do is switch over to the other side and see if those channels are working. I would think that they would, but, you know, we have to check anyway. Now we're on the right side, two amplifiers. So yeah, those two are working fine as well. Let's do the old power and distortion test. Okay, I have the 4 ohm non-inductive loads hooked up. I'll only measure at 4 ohms and we'll do a channel at 2 ohms since it's supposed to be able to handle 2 ohms. Now for a couple of reasons I cannot test all 4 channels because I only have 2 sets of these 4 ohm non-inductive resistors. Plus my supply doesn't have enough current when all four channels are driven. Because I know we're going to be a little more than half with just two channels. And it doesn't really matter. It really, what matters is having enough supply voltage and current for the amplifier. You know, there's four individual amplifiers inside there. So if they're getting the voltage and current on the pins, on the power supply pins, it'll be able to to deliver the same amount of power to all four channels that it could do with one or two. So yeah, I'm not really concerned there. So point the camera at the scope here. Just going to hand hold the camera here. So here's our one kilohertz sine wave. 
there's clipping it looks like nice symmetrical clipping no oscillations or anything going on and just take it out of clipping right about there that's 7.3 volts we'll say so at 12 volts I'm getting 13.3 watts maximum clean power before clipping out of this amplifier that's actually very good so I'm going to test it at a couple more voltages and I'll do the 2 ohm test and I'll come back with the results at the end okay here's the distortion at 1 kilohertz turn the signal on I know I explain this in every video but I don't assume everybody watches all my videos so this is the FFT mode on the scope this is 1 kilohertz signal 4.5 kilohertz 1% pilot signal and the rest is harmonic so we're getting a pretty high it's about a 1% second harmonic and uh, little blips of everything else well hello Snickers it just jumped up here now you're gonna have to move out of the way there so I can finish my video kitty cat so yeah kind of disappointing uh, sorry the cats bumping into the camera <laughs> ah, Snickers yeah so a little disappointing it might just be the layout or something else at the board I don't think the chip could do better. One thing I notice is the uh, the traces on the output, you know, that run over to the output, go right underneath these uh, these chips that handle the input signal. So you know that could be something to do with it. It's a second order signal, so it's I don't know if that would do that or not. But I've seen that a lot in these these bridged type amplifiers, these class A B types. So yeah, I'm a little disappointed with the distortion. Here's 10 kilohertz. Again, we have that large amount of second harmonic and a bunch of blips of higher order harmonics. And again, not really thrilled seeing that. Now we're at 20 hertz. And this is pretty consistent. We're getting that second harmonic and little blips of higher order distortions. Here is the summary of the TDA 7854 channel amplifier. The idle current, that just means the amp sitting idle with no signals. It draws 100 milliamps, so it's not bad for battery use. Maybe a little bit high. You want to use a large enough battery. Here's the power measurements. At 10 volts, which is the lowest voltage this thing correctly operates on, I was getting audio at 9 volts, but I was really getting a distorted signal when I was checking the, uh, the power measurements. So I would say 10 is the minimum operating voltage for this amplifier. 4 ohms, I was getting 8.3 watts. 12 volts, I was getting 13.3. And 14.4, I was getting 17. And that's very good for a, a bridged Class A, B type amplifier. That's the highest I've seen, even of the Class D amps. I'm not sure I've seen an undistorted signal at that level. Usually they come in around 15, some of the lower ones were uh, 13 watts, but this one's coming in at 17 at 14.4 volts. At 2 ohms, 10 volts is getting 11 watts, 12 I was getting 19.1, and 14.4, 25.7 watts. Quite a bit of watts. Noise is good. I'm not going to give a voltage reading or anything. I just listen by ear, and if the noise is not intrusive when I listen close to the speaker, then I just say it's good. Distortion, well, as you just saw, it's pretty disappointing to see that much distortion. Around 1% at 20, 
1K and the 10 kilohertz test signals. I must say I absolutely hate these little connectors. They, these are awful. Don't like these. Now the ones on this board here, these are the good ones. You can stick the wire in easy. This one you have to fight the wire in and it bunches up the wire and you're trying to get it in and you tighten it down and the wire pulls out. These things suck. I hate them. As for operating this thing on 2 ohm loads, all the channels, no, I don't recommend that. This tiny chip, you know, if you're getting 25 watts out of each channel, that's 100 watts total. That little chip has to dissipate the excess or the waste heat, which is uh, probably around 40 watts from that small chip. I'd say that'd be pushing it. Plus this little coil here would get really hot. So I would not recommend operating at least all four channels on two ohms. So what could you use this for? Well, you could have a front and rear channel type system. You can use two of the channels for subwoofer. You know, if you filter the input signal, so you have a couple channels handling the bass and the other channels handling the high frequencies. Well, since it does have that distortion, it is a second harmonic, and that type of distortion is not really intrusive. You don't really hear that. In fact, a lot of single-ended tube amps, you know, those things can have like 10% a second harmonic, and it doesn't really sound bad. So if you're really going to hear that, that's questionable at 1%. But as far as spec sheet ratings go, it's disappointing to see that board put out that kind of distortion. As usual, I find a problem with these boards. don't think I've really found one perfect. I found you know, some close to perfect, like this Class D board. It was a pretty decent little amplifier. But for now, Snickers and I, we're going to go hide from the tardigrades that are coming from the moon to attack. That's it. Thanks for watching.